Hey, what's up, guys? Darkbreaker here, and welcome to World Truth Patch Notes 5.2c. Big day for Assassin Junglers because the Rango rework is here. Wait, I didn't even I didn't even hear about this one. Yes, we are really excited about it. No, there are other things in the patch like your regularly scheduled balance updates. Welcome to patch 5.2c. Hope you guys will enjoy this video and we are gonna run through the patch notes and I'm gonna tell you guys my opinion uh, about the patch notes and how I think they are gonna affect the meta. Let's get started. Events. Journey to Mastery. Try out the newly reworked Rengar to earn goodies. We are handing out a 3 day trial card of Rengar so everyone can be part of it. Champion changes. So for Rengar. Rengar is receiving his rework this patch. We are reworking his abilities to allow for a variety of combos. His skills should also feel smoother as you pounce in and out of bushes. His damage output will also be much more stable, allowing his opponents to understand exactly how much health they need to avoid getting bursted. So for the base stats, attack damage increase by 4, attack damage per level by 0.4, Health per level increased by 7 and armor per level increased by 0.4. These are massive base stats. Buffs, by the way. Now for Unseen Predator, the passive. New, if Rengar does not gain ferocity from his basic attacks and at, and at less than 4 ferocity, he will be granted 1 ferocity instantly. If Rengar does not gain ferocity from his basic attacks and at less than 4 ferocity he will be granted 1 ferocity instantly. Rengar gains 30% to 50% movement speed based on champions level for 1.5 seconds by casting power abilities. Oh this is crazy. I, I would say the second ability the movement seed is uh, being put onto the, the passive kind of but for every ability which is crazy. All ferocity will be reset 8 seconds after staying out of combat. Bonus attack damage gained from taking down champions is getting increased in the early game, but lowered in the late game, making this early game a bit stronger. Savagery. The first basic attack after casting an ability will always crit with its damage boosted by the crit rate up to a maximum of 100% critical rate. Deal 60% damage to turrets. Damage of empowered basic attacks is getting increased by 10 at every rank and attack damage scaling stays the same. Damage of empowered basic attack with ferocity is getting increased as well by 10 base. Making him strong in the other game. But it always crits now. The first auto attack always crits now. After using the first ability. You, so you can use... Mm, and yeah, enhanced first ability. You jump with enhanced first ability and then you auto attack and it will always crit. It's crazy. And it, the damage is also boosted by the crit rate. So the more crit, you will, crit rate you have, the more damage you will do with the first auto attack. Question is though, by how much? That's the interesting question. Maybe you just get infinite edge and you call it a day because your first auto attack after first ability will always crit regardless. Or you're just maximizing going full crit damage build and all your crit rate is also getting turned into additional damage onto the next auto attack when you're using your first ability. So, battle roar. If the target dealing damage to Rengar is a monster, then Rengar restores 100% health equal to the damage he received in the first two seconds. Removed. Gains movement speed effects with casting powered abilities. But this is better now. Before it was just on second ability. Now, it is on every enhanced ability instead, which is massive. Bowler strike. Casting new. Casting Bowler Strike reveals the vision around the target for 2 seconds. Bowler Strike can now be cast during the leap. Oh, that's really nice. So while jumping, you can already use the third ability to slow the opponent down or root them. Hey, while you're jumping, you can root them. That would be actually, no, it's... You use your jump... 
Because I think while you're casting the jump, you're already using your ferocity. Um, we need to try. I'm not sure. Damage is getting increased by 10 at every rank. Damage with ferocity is also getting increased. Base, base damage though. And then for the ultimate, the cooldown is getting lowered in the early game by 15 seconds, in the late game by 5 seconds only. But the movement speed increase is getting increased by 10 at every rank, which is actually a lot. Massive, massive buff by the way on Rengar. The base stats are probably the biggest buff I can see immediately. Also the passive that you always get movement speed. Also crazy. This one, I'm not sure if I understood it correctly. If Rengar does not gain ferocity from his basic attacks. Usually you get ferocity while you use your abilities, right? Or the first auto attack when you don't have any ferocities. Or what, like when you're jumping onto something and you don't have any um, ferocity yet, you will get the one. Honestly, I don't understand. I'm too dumb. I don't understand. The, I don't understand the sentence. I'm stupid, I guess. Someone explain it in the comments. Thank you very much. When do you even get ferocity from his basic attacks? It's only when you're jumping while you have zero stacks. It was before like that. And you usually get only get ferocity while using an ability. Not because of auto attacks. So you have to rotate through your abilities to get like uh, ferocity. Or do they just say ferocity is when the effect is active? No. No, it's, yeah, like I said, you get one ferocity stack per ability used. Okay, whatever, someone, someone explained it to me. No, I'm too bad for this. Wukong, HP per level increased by 7. Golden Staff. Ooh, damage getting increased in the late game. Not bad. Wait a second. Zyra, Garden of Thorns, damage is getting increased. Ability power ratio is also getting increased. Then for the Deadly Spines, the ability ratio is getting increased. So, hey, not bad. Zyra is getting buffed again. Not bad buffs even because they buffed the ability power ratio, making us stronger in the late game. No, for Akshan. While Akshan is performing well in laning phases, it's not translating into the late game. We are improving his survivability to give him more room, uh, to give him room to make splashy plays in team fights. Base stats, armor per level is getting increased. Magic resistance per level also getting increased. Now for the Avengarang. The late game damage is getting increased, and the damage ratio to monsters is also getting increased in the late game though. Heroic swing damage of, damage of critical strike is getting increased by 25%, and critical strike damage with infinity edge is also getting increased. This seems like a massive damage buff though on uh, Akshan. 25% more. Which uh, seems pretty, uh, like, uh, pretty a lot. Now for the Seraphine. Seraphine is a great medic providing ample health regen to her teammates, which can be frustrating to play against. We are adjusting the amount of healing she is pumping out to give players more space for decision making when it comes to the right moment to heal. Surround sound. Cooldown is getting increased. And healing is getting decreased. So a nerf for Seraphine, especially in the late game. I mean, healing in the early game and cooldown late game. Now for Ugo, Perch. Damage is getting lowered. Oh, they are nerfing Ugo's early game damage by a lot. From 12 to 6. Massive early game nerf. I mean, Ugo, I think Ugo has one of the highest win rates in Baron Lane, by the way, in solo queue. 
We are adjusting Viego's damage to make sure. Yeah, Viego. I always ban Viego Yumi right now. He's really, really broken. Armor per level is getting decreased but from 5.5 to 5. Blade of the Rune King. Damage of passive basic attack. Current health is getting lowered by 1% per rank. Then here we have only 5% yeah, damage nerf. Scaling from 20% to 15%. And active damage. They lowered the crit from 0.7.5 to 0.5. Actually, pretty big nerf on damage. Heartbreaker cooldown getting increased. And also the ratio is getting decreased. So, decent amount of damage nerf on Viego and also reducing his armor. A level. Now for Kane, base armor is getting increased by 3. Energy gained by damaging melee champions is getting increased by three. Energy by energy gained by engaging and taking down melee champions is getting increased. Health regeneration in darkened form is getting uh, increased. So they're buffing red cane right now. Damage in darkened form. The damage you're doing, the scaling is getting increased from six percent to seven percent of the maximum HP. So you do more HP damage now, instead of just 6, from the start, 7 plus scaling. And Umbral, Trespass, Health Regeneration is getting increased. So, pretty decent amount of buffs on the Red Cane form. But I think Red Cane is pretty situational, you wanna pick him against more melee and tanky champions, but if they are like... Yeah, if they are melee champions or they are tanky, then a red cane is a great option uh, because of his uh, maximum HP target damage. So for the gameplay changes, we have Mortal Reminder. The armor penetration in the late game is getting buffed. For Serial Death Scratch, they did the same, but 3%. Redemption, the redeeming enchantment was not providing stable health regen to the team. We are reworking it into, a item, into an item to pro provide more frequent and stable healing to the team. Removed. Bam. Remove redeeming enchant. Base that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Heal ally unit in the range of 350 for 50 plus 6% bonus health every 8 seconds. If no allied champions are around, salvation will not be triggered. Eternity. Restore mana equal to 15% of the damage taken from champions. When consuming mana, restore health equal to 20% of mana consumed. Every cast restores maximum 15 HP. Sounds are not bad. Every 8 seconds they're getting healing. Seems crazy good by the way. Ardent Sensor. We're adjusting Ardent Sensor based that and ability to make sure it's providing benefits to allies. Ability power is getting lowered but ability haste is getting increased. Now for the passive. When you heal or shield an allied champion other than yourself, they gain 15 to 40% attack speed and the basic attack deals 20 to 40 bonus magic damage. So they get more attack speed now and they do more damage. Yeah, but yeah, basically before it was both would get the buff kind. Yeah, both would get the buff, but now it's just your ally. But at least they will get more value instead of beforehand. I mean, it was not bad though. I mean, bonus attack speed and magic damage it was probably pretty good for champions like Nami. They just keep poking or maybe even Lulu. Because you would just free harass in lane, having the additional Ardent passive. Like, you will buff your ally more, but you're losing the additional damage buffs on yourself. 
was still good for laning phase on uh, some enchanters. I'm not sure if I would call it even a buff, by the way. Seems like... Seems maybe like a nerf. What do you guys think? Depends on the champion, to be fair. Immortal Sheep Bow cost less. And now... Damage that puts you under 35% maximum HP grants a shield in, ad in advance equal to 250 to 550 damage, increasing with levels for 5 seconds. It doesn't scale with crit anymore. Mm, plus, plus 3 damage every 1%. Yeah, you're getting less crit. I mean, what do I say? Less maximum shielding. But it co also costs less because of that. And you don't necessarily have to get like 100% crit chance. I mean, at 100% crit chance you would have 600, but now it is 550 at maximum. But yeah, it uh, scales with level now instead of crit. Rune changes, giant player. Bonus damage is boosted up to 14% when enemies have 700. Oh, that's a nerf. Massive nerf. Uh, Giant Slayer was way too good. 14% additional damage when they have 700 bonus HP, which was easier to proc than now. You need 1600, but you get more damage boost. Yeah, Giant Slayer, just using Giant Slayer every single time is not going to be as efficient anymore. So Giant Slayer will be good like against full tanks in the late game, but the rune will be way worse against like champions that are still getting some HP, but not above 700. No, I mean, champions that have more than 700, you would have the damage boost, but now you have to have at least 1600. A massive nerf for Giant Slayer. Keystone Lethal Tempo. Remove gain stackable attack speed when attacking enemy champions. Stacks up to six times. At max stacks, you gain bonus range and can exceed your attack speed cap. Each stack increases attack speed by 7 to 13 percent, or 4 to 10 percent for six seconds. At max stacks, gain 40 percent attack speed. New gain stackable attack speed when attacking enemy champions. Stacks up to six times. At max stacks, you gain bonus range and can exceed your attack speed cap. Each stack increases the attack speed by 10 to 18 melee, so more than beforehand, and 7 to 15 range, more than beforehand. And max stacks gain 50 or 75 range attack speed. Yeah, you get more range now. But I don't know why they wrote here bonus. I think they fucked this up here. I don't think you would get a uh, attack ra a bonus range beforehand. I think this is wrong, this part here. I don't think you are getting bonus range beforehand. That's why they're writing here in the top part. You will gain, like, we're changing the mechanism of lethal tempo so maximum can gain further attack range. Further attack range. I don't think it was the case, right? Lethal tempo? Was Lethal Tempo giving a uh, like a range? I don't think so. Like not that I know. Or maybe I'm into and I just don't even know Lethal Tempo. Yeah, but no, uh, instead of giving you more attack speed, it's giving you more range. It's not bad though, because it makes it easier for you to reach uh, champions. Like let's say your Master Yi that is using Lethal Tempo, you will get more attack range. It's easier for you to attack while the opponent is running away. Wait, let me check really fast if I'm an inter or if Wardrop is an inter. Maybe I'm the inter here. Lethal tempo, huh? Yes. Yes, it is not me. Gain stacks of attack speed when attacking enemy champions. Stacks up to 6 times. When fully stacked, you gain bonus attack speed and can exceed the attack speed cap. 
Each stack gains 7 to 13 percent for six seconds. Full stack bonus gain 40 percent attack speed. So this part they put at removed is wrong. Yes, yes, it's not me. It is not me. I did it int. Riot int it. So, like I said, instead of getting attack speed, you're getting more range, which is not bad, by the way. Which is not bad, but having the 40% bonus attack speed is crazy for champions like Master Yi, Kale, etc. Or even Tristana or some ADCs. Not sure if the attack range is that important in comparison to attack speed. 40% attack speed is a lot. 75% attack distance nah, on range can be good. Especially like on Tristana, you have like massive range. You probably outrange so many champions for uh, spacing and team fights. It's not bad. It's also good. It's good in a different way, I guess. This gives you more damage. This can give you more damage if you try to chase someone and you would usually not be able to reach them. Um, but instead, yeah, it's pretty good for team fighting because you can position yourself more safely. Or for melee champions, it's easier for you to reach opponents that you otherwise would not be able to hit because they're kiting you. So. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. So for system changes, T-Hex Mecha. Optimize the maneuvering of basic attack which now can penetrate target hits with a damage decay. Slightly enlarge the hitbox of T-Hex Mecha, fitting better with its giant size. New prompts. New minimap prompts tip if T-Hex Mecha is spawned for a while but not activated. Yes! Dude, my teammates need this, especially the Baron laners. New minimap prompts effect on the lane where the TX mecha sets off. Skins. Arcade Riven. Elderwood Rakan. Arcade Riven. Nice. And that's come it. Nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the patch rundown. Um, War will on it. Rengar. Massive buff. Rengar. Giga, 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 massive buff. Not even a little bit. Not a little bit buff, massive, massive buff. Akshan seems like a big buff as well. Zyra, decent buff. Nerfed, nerfed. Red Cane, decent buff. Nothing too special for the items. What's the biggest change? Yeah, Giant Slayer nerf is massive. Lethal Tempo is going to be interesting for ADCs as well. Ardent Sensor for some supports can be interesting. Uh, more armor penetration, 3%. Don't think that matters too much. But yeah, that's good for the patch notes. Biggest change, obviously, is going to be the Rengar rework. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time. Bye bye. Write down below in the comments what you guys think about the patch. And are you guys hyped about Rengar? And yeah, leave some feedback. Definitely. I will read it, obviously. And I see you guys.